Start by painting your cutting board with some chalk paint. This is folk art chalk paint in the color antique green. I debated between doing a dark green or a navy, but really any color that you like would work, but probably a darker color because we're gonna stencil white on top of it. Also, if you can't find these bamboo cutting boards at Dollar Tree, this craft in particular could be made quite easily with just a piece of scrap wood. You do not need a cutting board. I just wanted to come up with a creative use for a cutting board, so here we are. So just a coat, and I kind of dry brushed it more towards the edges, let some of that wood grain poke through. And then I also painted the edges of the cutting board to make it finished, like a more finished look. And I also painted the back. I also added a very light second coat just in the middle because I wanted more solid coverage in the middle where my stencil was gonna go and then have it be more distressed around the edges. Then once that chalk paint had dried, I just grabbed my sanding block and I very lightly sanded the edges just so a little bit more of that wood would poke through and to make this look more distressed. Then clean up all that dust and then I grabbed a stencil. So this is a wildflower stencil. I got a pack on Amazon and I love them and I think I'll probably be crafting with them quite a bit. Just use some painter's tape to smooth down your stencil. And then I grabbed some more folk art chalk paint. This color is white Adirondack, but really any white chalk paint will do. And my pouncer brush, and then I just started on one side and I worked from right to left, pouncing straight up and down. It's really important that you don't use too much paint and that you go in a straight up and down motion just so that your stencil doesn't bleed and so that you have nice crisp paint lines when you remove the stencil. But just take your time and then before you let the paint dry, while it's still a little bit wet, very carefully peel away that stencil. And if you did it right, you'll have a beautiful little wildflower pattern. And then it was time to hang my sign. So I just used a ruler and a Sharpie to mark two little dots on either side of the top of the cutting board, just so that they were evenly spaced. And then I finally got smart instead of having to pull out my power tools, I ordered this pin vise. It's just a tiny little screwdriver tool. And this way on small craft projects, I can drill little holes, little pilot holes for things like these screw eyes, which I will be using to hang the wood bead hanger here. So then just screw those little screw eyes into place it gets a little trickier at the end, so I used my mini little screwdriver to get more leverage to completely tighten the screw eyes. And then I got this little garland at Dollar Tree. It's just unfinished wood beads on twine, or you could just string wood beads up on twine. But I just cut apart the garland here, and I removed several wood beads just so that I would have enough twine on the tail ends to run those tail ends through the screw eyes and then secure them on the end with a double knot. And that's it. And then here you have a little miniature sign that you can hang really anywhere in your house. But I decided to hang this up in my kitchen for springtime. I do hope you enjoyed watching this craft come together. Until next time, happy making!